Hey everyone, and welcome to Top Think. Today, we'll learn how to use art to express yourself. Now, let's begin. Why do humans create art? Why do we activate our imaginations to make paintings, music, and other creative works? Well, centuries ago, we thought of art as imitation. Back then, good art reflected the world around us. Artists painted portraits and scenery, aiming to precisely imitate real life. Over time, we began to understand art differently. It can reflect the external world, but it's also an expression of the artist's state of mind. In many ways, art provides a microphone for the heart and soul. It allows us to express complex emotions, work through problems, and understand the depths of ourselves. We use art to tell stories and to share the lessons that we've learned with the world. With art, we often try to capture feelings and ideas that are too lofty or vague or nuanced to explain directly. Those ideas aren't always clear or complete, and our feelings about them aren't always rational or organized. But that's what makes art so meaningful and expressive. Humans aren't the only animals capable of creativity, but we are the only animals that create art with such complex motivations and aesthetic values. Art is the foundation of culture and is, in many ways, a defining characteristic of humanity. To be human is to imagine and innovate. We're hardwired to exercise our creativity. We turn sounds into music. We organize movements into dance. We use language to form stories and poetry. Art is hardwired into our brains to release inhibitions and to express meaning in a complicated and confusing world. The beauty of art is that anyone can create it. We often think of art as the product of masters and generational talents, people with brand new ideas and perspectives who can change how others think. But art isn't reserved for high intellectuals and cultural trailblazers. The truth is that anyone, anyone, can be an artist, no matter your skill level or personality type. Not everyone can design multi-million dollar artworks that hang in the halls of galleries and museums, but we can all put paint on a canvas or lay our fingers on the keys of a piano. We all can use creative mediums to express what's on our minds. For most people, that's all that art ever needs to be. Unless you want to make a career in the arts, there doesn't need to be rules or limitations. You can enjoy the act of self-expression without pressure or expectation. In other words, create art for art's sake. You can make mistakes and leave your work unfinished. You can improvise and experiment with ideas and materials. Create something that reflects your unique tastes and feelings, regardless of what's considered good or valuable or sophisticated. When you create art for art's sake, no one's opinion matters but your own. If you like what you've created and it means something to you, then it's worth making. That said, expressing meaning through art isn't as easy as it sounds. Many people tell beginner artists to be true to themselves. They say that if you're genuine, then good art will follow. But not everyone understands what it means to express themselves like this or to communicate exactly what's on their minds. In our daily lives, we don't spend much time engaging with the kinds of ideas that fuel our imaginations and inspire creativity. Those creative muscles often go unused as we repeat the same work and routines day after day. Like any muscle, if you don't use your creativity, well, it starts to weaken. You forget how to express yourself artistically because you may not think of yourself as a creative or artistic person. When someone says, be true to yourself, your next question may be, what does that really mean? Self-expression in the context of art is a tricky thing to define. Meaningful art is often described as honest because it may communicate something hard to say or deeply personal. Not all art has to be so serious. It's wonderful to create art that's fun and spontaneous, art that has no deeper meanings or profound revelations. But even the more joyful art should be honest. In other words, it should represent what you're feeling. Otherwise, it doesn't really mean anything to you. So, what are you feeling? What emotions do you want to express? Many of us don't know the answers to these questions because, well, let's face it, they're hard questions to answer. 
We don't always know how to engage with our emotions. If something's particularly sensitive or vulnerable, we might build walls around those feelings so we don't have to deal with them or face them. As long as these walls stand tall, it can be challenging to be honest and creative. You may stare at a blank canvas and wonder, what could I possibly have to say? The answer is often whatever you have locked away inside your mind. The areas where we feel most vulnerable are often the most central to our identity. Practicing art is, in many ways, an act of self-exploration. If you want to tear down your walls and understand yourself at a deeper level, artistic expression can help you get started. It can destroy those walls as if you're mining through a mountain and discovering gems along the way. But what are you looking for inside yourself? What exactly does art help us understand? When we talk about art and creativity, we often talk about emotion. To put it simply, emotion fuels our creative impulses. It gives us material and motivation. It moves our fingers and our feet. Through works of art, we can give our emotions a voice, but only if we take the time and put in the effort to see our emotions clearly. Many artists will tell you that art cannot exist without self-reflection. In other words, if you want to unlock your creativity, then you need to first examine what you're feeling and why it matters to you. That's how you identify your psychological walls, and that's how you discover what motivates you as a new artist. Engage with your emotions to unlock something powerful inside you. Self-reflection isn't as complicated as it sounds. You don't need to uncover some profound revelation about yourself or some great insight into the workings of the world. If you want to practice reflection, then all you need to do is ask yourself some questions. You may ask yourself why you've made the choices you've made. Why have you chosen your hobbies or your career? What do you like about the place you live or the people you spend time with? You can also ask yourself about moments from the past and consider how those moments affected your interests. Questions like these inspire you to be curious, to seek answers, and to explore new possibilities. They also challenge you to think critically about impactful experiences, which often inspire stories and reveal deeper feelings. Even if you ask hundreds of questions, there is no guarantee that you'll find answers in your questions. Just because you're reflecting on your life, well, that doesn't mean you'll unearth the root of all your problems. But that isn't really the point. It's a widespread misconception that good art must reveal something concrete and profound. The truth is that even the greatest works of art don't provide answers to everything or anything. Instead, they often raise questions that we may never have thought to ask. They challenge us to think deeply and to make new connections. Only by doing these things can we begin to grasp something significant about the world or about ourselves. So, how do you get started? It's easy to talk about art and to analyze its value. But talking about art is very different from creating it. The best way to understand why art is valuable is to get out there and to make some of your own. Every person's relationship to art is unique. Creating art means something different for everyone. For some, art is therapeutic and revealing. For others, it's spontaneous and fun. Neither function of art is greater or lesser than the others because your art is and always should be your own. So if you're just starting, you may be intimidated by the many artists who have come before you. You may find yourself wondering why you, of all people, should create art when others are more experienced or talented. These thoughts can hurt creativity and stifle new artists. So remember this, no matter who you are or where you come from, you have something to say. You have a story to tell. You have emotions and experiences to share. You can create things that carry meaning and capture what it means to be you. Even if you have no training or experience, you, as much as anyone, have the capacity to create something beautiful. Yes, it may be intimidating at first, but the benefits of artistic expression speak for themselves. Many research groups have examined creativity over the years and discovered positive correlations with various social and psychological factors. If, for example, creativity is a known stress reliever. People who consistently use creative outlets tend to experience lower levels of stress and anxiety. Why is that? 
because creative mediums provide a unique form of emotional and psychological release. Not only can they be fun and relaxing, but they help you let go of stubborn thoughts and feelings. You take all the things that keep you awake at night and you channel them into something creative. You may discover those pesky worries and doubts suddenly disappear. Art is an incredible stress reliever, but it's also a great way to expand your mind. Studies show that creative people demonstrate higher levels of emotional intelligence. Others have found that creativity improves problem solving, leading to a higher IQ and a greater capacity for innovation. If all that wasn't enough, it's also strongly correlated with feelings of fulfillment, satisfaction, and personal enrichment. So even if you don't think of yourself as an artist, spend an afternoon letting your creative side run wild. Pick any medium, set aside your expectations, and express yourself as honestly as possible. You may be surprised at what your creative mind can do. Thank you for watching Top Think and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.